Hello everybody, hello YouTube, hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M, and I'm back with yet another video uh, for my collection. This time I'm continuing the Hunter Biden series. I'm talking about yet another one of his paintings from this exhibition, Fall 2021 at the Georges Berger Gallery. And again, I start at this website each and every time to talk about Hunter's paintings. I know, once again, I know I'm late, but I don't care. I want to do this. I really want to understand all these paintings, what he's doing in each and every one of them, and why he put them together to be seen together in the same room for this exhibition at this gallery in 2021. So oh, let me just not waste much time. I'm going to, again, I'm going to try and make this promise and I'm going to try and follow through uh, today. <laughs> I'm going to try and make this a shorter video. I don't have a whole lot to discuss today, just one painting. And I think the third and final one in what I call his self-portrait series. Now, it, and that's going to be this one over here on the left side of the screen, untitled number one. Let me click on it and open it in a new tab. As you can see, this is another, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say large painting. It's not that large. It's 48 inches uh, tall by 32 inches wide. So four feet, you know, it's not tiny, but it's not big, 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 like like that one that we talked about, this one. Bluebird and Coyote that's 74 inches tall. No, this one, untitled number one, is um, only four feet tall. Kind of like this one that we talked about last time. Self, I think, yeah, we talked about this one last time. Self-portrait. This is also uh, 48 inches tall. Now, before I get started with anything else, Remember with the video that I did for this one, self it's called Self-Portrait, and I was about to reveal to you where Hunter's image is, or an image of Hunter, whatever, however you want to call it, uh, in this painting. And I said, you know what, rather than just flat out tell you, let me see if you can figure it out. Um, and enough time has passed. And if you, if you watched that last video, thank you. If you're watching this video, thank you. Uh, and as a reward for coming back, I'm going to tell you where he is. If you haven't found him all by yourself already here, look, there's his eyes. There's one eye. There's another eye. There's his nose. There's the outline of his mouth, his hand. Uh, I can't, oh, his shoulders here and here and it seems to be um, a bracelet or a string around his wrist. And here's his hair, or his hairline. And on top of his head, he's got a, what looks like a pair of glasses, or maybe even a pair of sunglasses, shades, perched on top of his head. Okay, so he's, you know, hiding himself, even in this painting. Remember, I talked about that question that everybody on the internet was asking, has been asking for quite some time. Where's Hunter? Well, right there. Hiding in plain sight. And I said that there are two human figures depicted in this self-portrait painting. There's one, Hunter. I just pointed him out to you, and now you've, if you couldn't see it before, you could see it now. It took me a minute, too. And then there's this one. This is a figure of what seems like a scantily clad woman. I don't know if she's wearing, like, a slip dress, or is that a bikini? I'm not sure. Um, and there's her face, and she's also wearing what looks like sunglasses, too. So... That's interesting. The vanishing point of this cube, or the tip of this pyramid, whatever you want to, however you want to characterize it, it points at the lady, or towards the lady, and there he is in the background. There's his arm and his other 
there, there, this is one arm over here. The other arm is over here. He seems to be wearing a short sleeve shirt. So yeah, that's he, that he does include an image of himself. And in that one article that I discussed, both in the overview video for this series and in the video for Bluebird and Coyote that I did, um, the article where the journalist asks Hunter, oh, is that a picture? Are you including a picture of yourself in these artworks? And he, he flatly denies it. He says, no, no, no. Well, <laughs> does that make, does this make him a liar? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe he's you know, the artist. He wants you to look at the art rather than ask him questions. But mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But there's that. So where's Hunter? In this painting? Right here. <laughs> right here behind the receding cube. So make of that what you will. Today, like I said, I want to talk about this one. It's called Untitled Number One. He has a lot of untitled works. And let me close out the tab for this one because I am done talking about that one. Today, I want to talk about this one, Untitled Number One. And he... I guess he's lying again because he's answered the question, where's Hunter again in this work of art? He's right here. Look closely. That's a face. That's sunglasses. That's his head. Down here is his shoulders and his torso. And all of these squiggles and lines and colors and what have you down here could mean all kinds of things. These could be depictions, these red parts here could be depictions of either his veins or his ribs, maybe a little bit of both. This thing, this shiny kind of bulbous thing here, that might be his internal organs, it might be his heart. Um, this might be his aorta, I don't know. Um, so I'm just speculating. I don't know anatomy very well. But he is definitely here. And these things on his face look like puzzle pieces. Uh, the top part of his chest, his shoulders, this looks like some kind of nebula. Um, whatever. Down here are these little specks of color, blue and red and yellow and everything. It reminds me so much of Where's Waldo? And if you're old enough to know those books, then, you know, then you know what I'm talking about. But I want to talk about two things. Two, I've already, I've, in the other video, I wanted to let you guess uh, to see whether or not you could find Hunter. And whether or not you did, congratulations. Um, in this one, I just pointed him out right away. There he is, him and his sunglasses. In the other one, he's wearing shades, but they're on top of his head. In this one, he's wearing shades, but they're on his, you know, on his face, covering his eyes. They're shades, sunglasses. What are sunglasses for? Other than looking cool, they're for protecting your eyes from the sun. And that's what this is over here. This red orb over here on the right side. Uh, the viewer's right side, Hunter's left side, but the viewer's right side. And there's these mountains. And I've been talking about mountains lately in Japan. I talked about mountains and Japan in one of my Shining videos. I don't know when I scheduled that video, but it should be around the same time or a couple day, day or so before or after this video. I'm not sure anymore. But Japan and mountains. So this line here, I think it represents mountains. Uh, m mountains are sacred to the Japanese, uh, just as much as they're sacred to the Greeks and Native American cultures and a whole bunch of cultures on planet Earth. And they're sacred as far as they play a big role in mythology. And we mustn't forget, we can't forget that Hunter's art is about exploring various mythologies on planet Earth from all kinds of different cultures. 
I'm not talking about the scandal. I'm not talking about the scandal. Uh, I guess I'm in the minority because it seems like a lot of people reviewing his work had no problem talking about the scandal, talking about his personal life, his private life, whatever. Me, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm just going to look at the art and I'm going to tell you what the art tells me. The story or the message that I believe is being transmitted through the art by Hunter, the artist, that's what I'm going to relate to you, my viewer on this channel. I'm not going to get into any anything political or or what have you. No, 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 no. We're just going to talk about this and what he might be possibly doing with regard to using mythology and depicting symbols of mythology, icons or iconography, um, even the use of color, even in this case the use of letters. He's, these parts that I said could be a depiction of veins, arteries, ribs, whatever. There's writing here. It seems to be in gold ink. And I looked for it. I tried to I tried to find out whether or not he was quoting some other thing. Like in the exhibit on the wall, there's that quote from the Joseph Campbell book, the hero. Uh, the, oh, can't think of it right now. But that you know what I mean. That book from from Joseph Campbell. This these this these letters this writing. I looked it up, but I couldn't find it any at least not on Google. And if I couldn't find it on Google then that means it might be original to Hunter. This might be a product of his mind. So, you know, rather than him quoting another author or something like that. But I said, I've been talking about mountains. We've been talking about Japan in my Shining video. Um, my first, like, official video in my Shining series. And here we are with mountains and Japan and again, again. Uh, and why do I say this? Because that's what I think he's depicting. This is very well known as symbol for, for Japan, and you find this on the Japanese national flag. Um, what is it? It's the sun. What is Japan also called? The land of the rising sun. Okay? And what What, what you need to kind of understand is that Japan and this symbol is based on mythology that has to do with the sun. Yes, it does. Uh, the names, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I think, three Wikipedia pages in this video. Uh, this one, the names of Japan. Uh, this one, the Wikipedia page for the goddess Amaterasu. And then this third Wikipedia page, the uh, page for the Empire of Japan. So, as you can see, this is the Japanese flag. And it's just a white sheet with a red orb in the center. That represents the sun. Ooh. You know, you, again, this is not a product of the West calling Japan the land of the rising sun. No, it's based on mythology and geopolitics. So the old name for Japan is, and I hope I don't pronounce this horribly, uh, Nippon or Nihon. Um, and what does that mean? Let me, let me do a control F search. Sun. Sun. Sun source country. Okay. Sun source country. Should I, should I read this whole sentence? Uh, first I have to figure out where it begins. Uh, no, I don't think I will. But, you know, sun source country. Land of the rising sun redirects to this page. Okay, so sun, the, 
Japan is regarded or was regarded as the source of the sun. By who? It says here, circa 1300, uh, based on the Chinese name, probably Sun Source Country. That's interesting. Uh, both, and here we go here, both Nippon and Nihon literally mean the sun's origin. That is where the sun originates. And are often translated as the land of the rising sun. Okay. Um, so the Japanese kind of chose this name because of Japan's relation to the Chinese. Okay, and the Chinese seem to have been the origin for this sun source country or the sun's origin name. Because from China's perspective, that's what it is. It is the origin of the sun when they're looking eastward. Okay? Now, that's, you know, I think that's enough of that. I don't need to get into that too deeply, but another way that mythology plays into this, this red orb that we see here, it's almost identical. I mean, he even, he seems to have worked, Hunter seems to have worked hard to get that shade of red, that precise shade of red that you find on the sun orb from the Japanese flag, which I, I don't think that's a coincidence. But um, this goddess, Amaterasu, she is, among other names, she is the goddess of the sun in Japanese mythology. And what part does she play? Like, what is her role in, in I guess, the practicality of mythology? She is there to legitimize the rule of the Japanese emperor. And most culture, what a lot of people don't know unless they've studied it or been told by somebody, is that most cultures on planet Earth, especially in their ancient incarnations, had to somehow legitimize the rule of their kings, leaders, emperors, what have you. And how did they do that? Mythology religion by claiming to be related to a god or a goddess or a deity of some kind. And Japan is no different. So in, in the case of, of Japan, they use this, this is probably just one of the ways that they do it, but I guess one of the ways that they do it is they use this sun goddess and she's so important as far as her association with the sun that she is still more or less referenced in the national flag of Japan. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Okay, like I said, it's based on mythology. It's also based on geopolitics. Um, this is an imperial symbol, more or less. And it has to do with China. Because from China's perspective, Japan is the source of the sun. Okay, as early as, or as, as recently as, sorry, as recently as about the 1940s, the Japanese empire extended into China. When you find stuff like this out, as an American, for example. They didn't teach this in schools. Not me, anyway. In public school, high school, whatever. They never told us that. They don't tell us about Japan's history. They don't tell us about China's history. They should tell us at least a little bit, but no, they don't tell us anything. They don't teach us this kind of stuff. They don't teach us about the empire of Japan. If it's mentioned, it's only mentioned in relation to whatever was going on in Europe during the Second World War, which is pretty in interesting and important to know, but it's very... 
limited. We don't we don't get the extended version of the story, or um, any extras. No, but we should. We really should. Now, I said all of that. <laughs> like you know, people when they tell stories, they they say I said all of that to say this. I told you that story so I could tell you this one. Okay, let's go back to the painting. I told you all of this, the names of Japan, uh, the origin of the sun, the sun goddess Amaterasu, and I mentioned the empire of Japan and this orb, this red orb, as an imperial symbol of Japan that is still used on the nation's flag. All in relation to this. So if this is the symbol of Japan, and Japan is the land of the rising sun. And these very well might be a depiction of Japanese mountains. And the sun is coming from over there, over and over there is Japan. So what's this? Over here. Hmm? What's this? This, this stuff here behind. Hunter. Not his body. No, but this background, these little flecks of color, like I said, blue, red, yellow, uh, yellow. Um, could this possibly, his background in the lower part of the painting, could this be a depiction of China? And Hunter himself, his body, and I already identified his cranium here and this sunglasses to shield his eyes from the sun. Um, Hunter seems to be situated, positioned, located. In the scheme of this painting, he seems to be located here, in the space that I have, that I'm speculating, and I think I have identified as China. Hunter's in China. Japan's over here. He's got nebula. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and call this purpley part nebula. He's got puzzle pieces on his face. He's got sunglasses. He seems to be, he doesn't seem to be wearing a shirt in this um, depiction of himself. But okay, he, I do see dog tags. Dog tags are associated with the military, the United States military. So make of that what you will, in the scheme of all the rest of this stuff. Okay, and then there's this. This is, to me, kind of the most interesting part, because it's the hardest part to see. He's almost deliberately made this hard to um, identify within the rest of this painting. And I looked and I looked, and no, like I said, I couldn't find it as a quote from a book or anything else. But I did find it here. And again, I think this is original to Hunter, but this person on this website, James Panero, seems to have, in September of 2021, written something. I don't know what this is. Is this a review, or is this just James's thoughts regarding... Hunter's art. I've read through it. I don't even think that he's really reviewing or discussing Hunter's art. He seems to be mostly discussing Hunter and Hunter's background and Hunter's private life, which is one of the things that I said I'm not going to do, and, and I'm going to hold to that. I'm not going to do it. But this guy, he definitely does do it. And you can read this in your own time. Um, whenever you'd like to. I'll leave the link for this article in the description of this video. But this is where I found um, the text, the text from here, from these red parts, what I said are veins, arteries, ribs, I don't know. Um, and I'm trying to find it again. I know it's below. So he, he, he puts a much better... Ooh, this is a nice resolution, this this photo of his painting. So, so where is this? I could, oh yes, there it is. So, this part, this red part with the gold, I think it's gold, ink with the writing, 
this is what it said. I guess this guy saw it up close. And it says, all around him, beautiful things, tangled colors, cradled mercy, made real, rose up, and he began again to write a new story. That's what it says here. And I don't know if I read that correctly. I'll try again. All around him, beautiful things, tangled colors, cradled mercy, made real, rose up, and he began again to write a new story. I don't know if I got it on the second shot either, but I tried. Um, very ambiguous. No punctuation could be interpreted all kinds of ways. And again, like I said, you could probably even see from this little bit on the screen that the author of this article doesn't seem to be too fond of, uh, of Hunter. Doesn't seem to like Hunter as a person, but I, I'm not going to deal with that. This That's not my place. Um, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But, so that's what Hunter wrote in Gold Ink. Again, I'm assuming it's Gold Ink on this painting. In this red portion, where all his other organs are depicted. His organs, his dog tag, which if that's his heart, oh dear, right above his heart. Sunglasses, shielding his eyes. Hmm. This could be China. These could be the Japanese mountains, the sacred mountains. Remember, don't forget, Hunter is dealing with mythology, meta-narratives, the origins of mythology, really, I think that's what Hunter is trying to understand. Where does mythology come from, and what is its purpose? And how can it be used to achieve all kinds of things? So, anyway, like I said, I will include... Um, all of the links, all of the sources I've discussed, all of my Wikipedia pages, and that article this by this guy uh, that has to do with his painting. And I think that's it for Untitled Number One, Mixed Media on Paper. Mind you, paper. doesn't say you pull paper. No, this one's just on paper. So uh, I think I, you know, I tried. I tried. Uh, if you have your own ideas, please let me know. I would love to hear them. At this point in the video, I'll go, go ahead and take care of the church announcements and administrative business. Um, I want to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Please consider giving me a like. Uh, let me know that you like the, paint, uh, the painting. No, this video. Let me know that you liked it. Uh, comment. Tell me what you thought. If you didn't like it, let me know. Let me know if you didn't like it. And if you think that this is good enough to show to other people, please do feel free to copy the link and share this video to other other places for people that you uh, want to see to see it. Want, want to see it to see it. Oh, God. Um, and other than that, I think that's it. For today. Once again, thank you very much. And in the future, in my future videos that I've got planned, I'm going to keep doing the Hunter videos, going to keep doing the Shining videos, and I'm going to start kind of interspersing more, again, art history lecture type videos. I'm kind of planning on doing one on Mesopotamian art within the next few days, so stay tuned for that one. Um, and until then, until the next time that I talk at you in a video, uh, I wish you well. I uh, hope you, you uh, have a great week or weekend or whenever you're watching this. And again, until the next video, I'll go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye everybody.